if you found a property with wetlands on it and people are telling you not to buy it or if you're an owner of property with wetlands and you want some ideas on how to improve the sale price of your property i'll show you ways to increase the value of the property significantly and there's so many things you can do with the property which i'll also touch on there's a lot of misinformation out there that would stop you as a buyer from buying property which is a total mistake don't listen to it unless you're looking to build a house right where the wetland is located if the wetlands aren't directly in your way of building property with wetlands is a good thing and it is something you should consider don't exclude it you want it that in the mix of property you're going to look at and if you want to improve the value of the property the wetland portion as a buyer completing some of the projects i'm going to describe it's going to be a nice added chapter to your life You'll probably have fun doing it, and it's certainly going to be rewarding when you're done. I also want to give you a little bit of history and background as to why wetlands has such a bad rap. Because it doesn't apply to you as a non-developer. Florida had about 20 million acres of wetlands when people first started building and moving here. And since that time, due to development, almost 10 million acres of wetlands have been drained or filled. Eventually, it was realized that wetlands was really important to the whole ecosystem. And in 1984, there was a Warren Henderson Wetlands Protection Act, as it was called, that started the process of protecting the wetlands. Eventually, in able to take away wetlands, you had to replace the wetlands. Those are called mitigating credits. The primary reason that wetlands has such a bad rap originates from the construction industry because smaller builders generally won't build on property that have wetlands where they need to work around around the wetlands so you even have people in the real estate community that have no idea what to do with wetlands so they just go along with what was the industry norm which is that you can't build on it so it has no value that shouldn't deter you if you're not a developer and you're buying the property for your personal use even if you're buying property as an investment that has some wetlands on it just make sure you've comped out the wetlands portion of the property and you're paying the right price for it Large developers handle wetlands differently. There are companies that restore wetlands that were previously destroyed or are in need of restoration just to bring it back to its ecosystem purity. That's a good thing. And then the restored wetlands are used to replace the wetlands that's lost to development. This is known as mitigating credits and they're sold through what's called a mitigating credit bank. Large builders buy mitigating credits all the time. When they need to build on a track of land that has wetlands on it, they buy the mitigating credits, and essentially they're saying, well, I'm building on this wetlands, but I'm going to replace it. I'm replacing it with the new developed wetlands that's in the bank to make the trade. By the way, as a side note, they are running out of mitigating credits. If you're a new developer, if you personally need information about that, feel free to give me a call. I have the info. I can gladly speak to you about it. If you're not looking to become a developer and you're not looking to build on the exact spot of the wetlands, the wetland issue really doesn't apply to you. But you'll get more acreage for less, it's a great barrier between you and your neighbors, and there is a lot more that you could still do with it. That's different from other properties. You could increase the value of the wetlands with just a handful of projects. You have to do it within the Environmental Protection Commission rules and regulations, but if you're the property owner, there are many things they'll let you do that they wouldn't otherwise allow. You may choose not to make any improvements, which is fine. When you turn around to sell, the upland will continue to carry the primary value of the land portion of your property. But if you want to increase the wetland portion to start really boosting the value of the property, the trick is to make the wetlands usable. In Florida, 55% of the wetlands are forested wetlands. That means that they're seasonally wet. Other than the rainy season, a lot of the forested wetlands is dry during the rest of the year. Not all of them, but enough to increase the value of the property by improving it. You're going to have, on certain portions of forested wetlands, you could have streams, you could have large pooling of water. We're going to assume for a moment that you're dealing with forested wetlands. That's the most common type of property you're going to end up buying that has wetlands on it for residential purposes. With forested wetlands, you could be walking in the woods and not even realize you're in the wetlands. And wetland designation isn't just about water. It's also about the type of plants that exist in the wetland area, the soil, and other factors. So it's a real good idea to call the Environmental Protection Office that handles your county. They'll come out for a small fee and they'll flag the property. So you'll be able to visually see where the wetland starts. And then you're going to want to sketch out your property. Now you may have a survey. A survey is good. But you still want to physically walk the wetlands and actually sketch out certain areas. You want to kind of see where you have large streams, small streams, ponds, or other accumulated masses of water. If it's not the rainy season, you want to also sketch out the areas that are muddy, a little bit of mud, because they're going to get saturated during 
the rainy season. With forested wetlands, you're going to have plenty of land that's actually dry. Starting with the dry areas and county approval, you should aim to open up the property by cutting two to four foot wide trails throughout. You could frame out the paths as long as you're using environmentally friendly material. And then you want to start dealing with the muddied areas you sketched out. It's a pretty simple solution. You're going to use boardwalks that are going to vary in size depending on your personal preference. You could build high-end boardwalks, or you can make it just functional, just to get past the muddy areas. So far you have your cut paths and your muddy areas. You're putting on boardwalks, you may have to raise them, figure out the height level. And then the next thing you're going to come across are streams and water flows. In forested wetlands, you can have different types of water. For the nice water flow areas, you want to put bridges over them. In forested wetlands, it's common to see shallow canals that are 4 foot wide, 8 foot wide. And then you have bodies of water, and whether you put a bridge or not, it's up to your budget, I guess. You're making your wetland area real usable. You'll be able to comfortably hike it. You're opening up the wetlands without harming the environment. And any of these projects will increase the value of the wetlands. If you're a buyer looking for land to begin with, having part of your property in wetlands could be a real nice fit. So to improve your own enjoyment and increase the value, you should add platforms and decks to the scenic areas of the wetlands. That could be water areas and it could be open landscape areas. Building a platform or a deck again with county approval, is going to increase the value of your wetland portion of your property. On private property wetlands, I've come across hunting cabins, and actually you could put in gazebos, yurts, and tents to make use of different parts of the property. So if you have a path out to the yurt, you have a nice getaway spot. And that's the trick. Make the wetlands usable, you'll enjoy the property more, and you'll increase your price per acre in the wetlands when you're ready to sell. Anything that you do to the property that's in the wetland area, you do need Environmental Protection Commission approval. Anytime I've spoken with the EPC, they're very hopeful. Again, they're not looking to stop property owners from making use of their property. They just want to make sure that you're not taking down trees and destroying the wetland environment, which is very important to keep intact these days, obviously. I've sold many properties that have wetlands on it, and I can tell you if you're a seller, it's better to make the wetland area accessible, at least with trails. Most buyers won't walk the wetlands unless there's a path to get in there. Without being able to walk the property and see how much use they could actually get out of it, you'll still sell, but you'll lose some potential buyers. Also, make sure you're working with a broker that has experience with wetlands. Hopefully you have a better understanding of wetlands now. It dispels some of the nonsense you get because people can't build on wetlands. If you're seeing this on YouTube, hit subscribe. I have a part two of what you can do with the wetlands coming out which will tell you everything you can do with the wetland property for your own enjoyment. Hit subscribe and hit the little bell. The bell will notify you when the next video comes out.